Back a few years ago, when I was in college, I had the chance to go to Scotland to go study abroad for a semester. I chose to go to Scotland. <coughs> so that was a great, great adventure. And, and uh, I got on a plane in early January, went to go, well, flew to LA, I guess, got to LA, flew from LA to, to, to London. And so got on the plane, got off the plane in London, jet lag after like 12 hours of air flight, landed, and I just couldn't understand a word these people were saying. They spoke this foreign language. But somehow I figured out how to find a train to Edinburgh, and I got on the train, and I'm starving, and I'm freezing cold, because it's cold in that part of the world. And I'm tired, and I'm disoriented, and I can't understand people, and I'm hungry, so I went, and I got some, I thought, Crackers and cheese are great. So I, I got some, some cheese and biscuits. The woman laughed at me when I bought them. I didn't. Well, biscuits are not crackers. Biscuits are cookies in this part of the world. Where's bar? Yes. You remember this. You know this. This is all nothing to you. So I'm eating my cheese and cookies. <laughs> OK, healthy meal there. So I, I, I know I'm going to be walking all over Scotland, so I, I brought my, my kind of walking gear, hiking boots, and I get off the train, and I thought I had trouble understanding people in London. Now I'm in Scotland, and the guy comes up, and I got my suitcase, I need to take a taxi, something I never did growing up in San Jose, nobody took taxis. And the guy comes up and he says, so I'm out so I can take your bouquets for the boot. What? <laughs> the boot, but not boot. My boots? What about my boots? He wanted to put my suitcase in the boot, which is their trunk. Right? Well, I didn't know that. Then I get to my boarding house, all these dudes are there, and it's freezing cold. Because Scotland's a cold country. And they have, they have no central heating, they have these little floor heaters on the, and you know, I have to take 10, 25 pence and put them in a little, stand in front of this heater, and my room was freezing. So I, <clears throat> I went downstairs to the land lady I just met, and I said, it's really cold in my room. Can I get a, an extra blanket or a comforter, maybe? She says, oh, I'll give you another blanket, but you don't want the comforter to do you. Comforter is a pacifier for a baby. <laughs> Words matter. And I didn't know these words. And words can be confusing if you get the wrong definition for them. So today we're going to look at a word, a very important word. The word is baptism. What does baptism mean? We, we know what it means because we've seen people baptized. Who was baptized here? It was Brian, right? Yes, we baptized Brian like, like about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, we baptized Brian. We know what that's about. We poured water on him. We said some some, some prayers. We, we baptized young children. We baptized babies. We baptized adults. Some churches baptize them by by having them get dunked all the way down. And some like ours don't do that. If you come from German background, where if you dunked people, they would probably die of cold. So. We kind of adjusted how we do baptism. But they, they, they're just different ways. And, and we know what that means. But then we see John baptizing people today. And, and that's a little bit different than we have done. And then we see Jesus get baptized. And as we think about what baptism means and how we, what we talk about, why does Jesus get baptized? Jesus baptized for different reasons. What does this baptism mean? And what does that mean to us? So let's unpack that. Let's unpack what this word baptism means. Let's, let's begin it. Gracious Lord, you give us words and you give us meanings for those words and you give us the ability to understand your word. Please open our hearts and mind that we might 
know what your word is, and be empowered to live that out with our minds and with our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. So when I say the word baptize, what does that mean? What is the definition of baptize? What language does it come from? My favorite language. Latin? Greek. No, it's, not. it's Greek. And after four months, I got that one down. So, and what's it mean? Bath. Bathe. Clean. Immerse. Does not mean immerse. <laughs> it, means, it means wash. Wash. So we add that extra R in it sometimes, yeah. No, it, it means to wash. So some of you are going to go home and you're going to baptize the floors and baptize the clothes that need to get taken care of. And those dishes in your sink need to be baptized. So baptize just means to wash. Peter says, 1 Peter 3, he says, baptism saves you. It's a pretty clear statement. Baptism saves you. Baptism makes something happen. Gives you a place in the world. Gives you a place with God. Gives you, gives you some, some, some changed condition from this cleaning. So what is this baptism that Peter is talking about? Well, let's start with John the Baptist. John the Baptist is this crazy lunatic guy. He's a prophet. Many of the prophets were seen that way. But he's pretty close to it. I mean, he's this living in camel hair. He's got a leather belt around his neck. He's eating grasshoppers out in the middle of nowhere. That's, that's who he is. And he's baptizing. He's washing. He's, he's got these people. Thousands of them probably came to him. And he's, he's baptizing them. Now, baptism is not a part of the Jewish tradition. So it's not like this came out of, of that. Now, Jews do wash ceremonially. And if you were a Gentile in the presence of Jews, you might have to wash extra amounts because they, you were inherently unclean. But baptizing was not something that they did. But here he is out there baptizing all these people washing all these people that come to him, whether they're Jews or Gentiles. And he's calling on people to recognize that they are sinful, that they have this sinful dirt on them. And these people are coming into him saying, yes, I get it. I'm, I'm sinful and I want, I want to wash that sin away. I want to demonstrate that, that, yeah, all this stuff that I've done that I, that I wish I didn't do, I want to get rid of it. So wash me and, 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 help, and help me to, 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 to make a New Year's resolution that says, okay, I'm just not going to do that anymore. And now I'm, I'm kind of done with it. I, I took off my dirty clothes. I'm putting on new clothes. And I'm truly sorry. And I, I want to be different. That's what John was doing. People were saying, I want to live differently. I want to obey God's laws in the future. It was something, it's not a bad thing, but it was something they were doing. And it's something that had no promise from God in it. But it was preparing their hearts, preparing these people for a Messiah who was coming. It was something they were doing. And into this steps Jesus. Now, Jesus is different than the rest of us. Does he have any sins to confess? Does he need to turn over a new leaf for the new year, new, make new year's resolutions? Does he need to wash the dirt off him? No. No. He's God. God is perfect. God can't tolerate. God can't. God can do anything, but won't tolerate sin. So into this steps Jesus, and he steps into this baptismal process, and, and some things happen. First of all, the heavens open up. 
And this is something that the people would have understood because other religions of the time talked about the heavens opening up and there is a direct connection with heaven and earth. And that was a divine, remarkable thing happening. Heavens opening up. Who is this Jesus that they open up for? Then a spirit descends on him. What, what descends on him? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, in the form of? Dove. The form of a dove, like that one. So that's a remarkable thing. And then we hear a voice, a voice come from heaven saying, this is my son, listen to him. Remarkable things in the middle of this washing baptism thing, suddenly there's this holy event that says, this guy is not like everybody else. And then Jesus gets baptized. He gets washed. Now, you said Jesus had no sin in him. Is Ken right? He's a man. Right? He's a man. man and man has sin. Because of the soul. The soul. Because it's, it's just part of who we are. Ken, does, does Jesus have any sin? Man has sin. Jesus has sin. He has your sin. Which is a lot to bear. But he has the rest of ours too. Jesus has all of our sin. So yes, he, as God, he has no sin. Absolutely right. But he comes down and he says, no, I am one of you and I am like you. And I take on all of your sin. Which is the reason we can go before God because we are sinless because it's all been given to Jesus. So Jesus comes, he turns this baptism thing, which, which was me doing it, into something that he does out of the power of being God and also as being man. And being man who takes our sin upon himself so he can truly be man. He shows us, as you said earlier, he's one of us. Then there is our baptism. John's baptism, Jesus' baptism. Then there is our baptism. When we hear Jesus' words about what baptism is, he says it's important to be baptized. He says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And in Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them. So there's some connection between, between becoming a, a disciple, becoming a follower, becoming a member of the family, and being baptized. Jesus talks about being born anew, born from above, born, uh, 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 born again. And he talks about this new permanent relationship with him that's different than our relationship with the world. And part of that is being baptized. See, with, with John, people got baptized themselves. They washed themselves. And they said, okay, now I'm, I'm going to try to be better. With Jesus, he baptizes them and he actually changes them. And he makes them part of the family. Our own power, Jesus' power. In our baptism, we are genuinely, authentically made different than we were before. In baptism from Jesus, we are different. And we need to remember that. We need to intellectually know that. We need to be able to say six times six is 36. I get that. I'm different. But we can also remember with our bodies, with who we are. We moved the baptismal font to the, to the back here. Have you seen this in churches before? Have you seen this in Lutheran churches before? <clears throat> Catholic churches a lot, right? 
It's not a Catholic thing. Pre Lutherans do it, Presbyterians do it, Methodists do it, Anglicans, Episcopalians do it. A lot of churches do it. The Catholics just do it really well, I think. That's... And there's this time when there's this time when the Protestant church was the kind of we are not the Catholic church, and so we're going to do everything they do, we're going to do different. So they stopped doing that. So it's, this is an ancient tradition of us as Christians. And it's one that we need to embrace. Maybe not all the time, but if, if you're comfortable doing this, boy, do it. So my call to you is today, as you leave, as you know that you are baptized, that you are changed, that you are different, that you're not just washing the dirt off yourself, that Jesus is washing it off you, that you're not just saying I'm going to be uh, in, in the Jesus club from now on, that he actually puts you in his family by his action, not by your own. I suggest that you walk by that baptismal font. And as they did 2,000 years ago, you dip your fingers in it and you put it on your forehead. And you remember, just as you did when you were a little baby, you are baptized. You remember that Jesus touched you and makes you his. That your body knows, as well as your mind, that you have been changed. That you are different. That God makes you a promise that he holds to today. That you are in his family. What does baptism mean? That's what it means. You are his. Our gospel. Good news gospel. Now God's people say.